All right, physical science students, here we are on um, our third video, which is going to show you how to do the graphing portion of finding acceleration. Now you'll see I've already set up my axes um, using some information that I gathered ahead of time. Here's my little uh, velocity position time uh, table that I filled in way at the very beginning. And if I read the instructions carefully, which I did, it said that I should label the first line with my initial time. Well, there was my initial time right here, 45.92. And then it said to just increase every other axis and make it 0.1 more. So if this was 0.92, here it is, 46.02, 0 0.12, 22, and so on. And then on the y-axis, I start with zero, and then I do every other line as 20 so that I can show my position. This will best fill in your graph so that it covers most of the stuff. Now, when I plot my simple line of just the first two data points, first two data points, I don't need anything fancy, just those first two data points. That's the information I'm gonna fill into that table right there, my first two data points. My initial position was zero. I started out at zero and my initial time was 45.92 seconds. The second data point was 12 centimeters and 46.08 seconds. That is what I want to plot on my graph. So zero and 45.92 ought to be the origin if I set up my graph correctly. And there it is. My second data point is 12 and 46.08. So I'm going to kind of help myself out here. And This line is 10, so 12 is maybe there. 46.08 is about halfway, a little more than between 46.02. So right around there, the spot where those two lines cross is going to be my data point. Oops, I'm in red. I want purple. There we go. So to connect the data points, notability, you just hold on to that point and it'll draw a lovely straight line between those. To find the slope of that little line that we just drew, we do rise over run. Well, the rise is the difference in position and the run is the difference in time. This should look familiar because I just did this calculation on the second page of my data calculations. So what was the difference in rise? Well, the tallest of my two points was at 12 centimeters and the shortest was at zero. That was my final minus my initial position. And then my stopwatch values, the larger of the two was 46.08 seconds. The smaller of the two was 45.92 seconds. It doesn't look like this. Seconds. And if I do that, um, I will come up with... 12 centimeters divided by 0.16 seconds, which gives me 75 centimeters per second. And it asks if it looks familiar. Well, the reason it asks if it looks familiar is that if you zip back up to page 2, right here, you just did that exact same calculation. That's because the slope of a line that plots position and time is the same as the average velocity. So then the other thing it asks us to do is to go ahead and plot the other points. Because if this was traveling at a constant speed, that line would be able to be extended in a nice straight fashion. So it would just keep on heading like that. So that's what we would expect to see if the average velocity didn't change. But we know based on just looking at the pictures and looking at the data that we've already calculated, that that's not true. That our 
lines, um, our points will not be in a nice straight line because we're actually moving faster every split second. So what is my next position in time? Well, that's over here on my data table, 42 and 46.2. So 42 is around here. And then 46.20 seconds would be mm, right around here. So that spot would be my next data point. And my last one, 76.5, right around there and 46.31. Now, this does not have to be perfect because you'll see pretty clearly that these definitely do not follow that nice straight line. In fact, they sort of follow a curve. And that is what we expect to see on a position time graph of something that has acceleration. We would see a curve. So when we answer the question, can you connect these with a straight line? No, we can't. And that's because we've been using instantaneous or average velocity and we need to use instantaneous, which is what we're going to do in the last.